Man is on a quest to play God, to control the weather and use it as a weapon. Lightning, torrential rains, hurricanes, targeted at the enemy. The ultimate war is if you never have to fire a round and nobody ever knew you had launched the fight. Is it possible there have already been attacks using weather weapons? Some people believe that Katrina was weather warfare at its most potent. But how do we get from understanding extreme weather to making it do our bidding? Earthquakes, tidal waves, those become the future of warfare. This series investigates how the impossible is becoming possible and what it might mean in the future. If an enemy could change the jet stream over North America, it could plunge North America into an ice age. July 11, 2008. Lightning researcher Alyssa Eastvet is crouched down in an underground bunker at the top of the Magdalena Mountains west of Socorro, New Mexico. I'm in an underground room. My ceiling is at the ground level of the top of the mountain. Her mission, trigger and direct lightning strikes to a target of her choosing. The goal with these triggered lightning experiments is really trying to find out what starts lightning. There's a lot we don't understand about lightning, and one of the biggest questions is how does it get started? What's the initiation process? There's a lot that we do understand about what happens during the lightning flash, but how it gets started is still a complete mystery. Lightning is produced in thunderstorms when liquid ice particles collide, building up large electrical fields in the clouds. But what actually triggers it is a mystery. Alyssa's experiment is off limits to film and video. She's in a protective underground chamber shielded by layers of rock. Above her is a rocket she'll launch into the storm clouds. It's attached to a wire nearly one mile long, anchored to the ground. As storm clouds gather, Alyssa will become the target. You're trying to intercept a lightning bolt that's going to happen anyway. You're watching your monitors to make sure the cloud conditions are right for a lightning bolt to strike somewhere near you. And then you want to get your rocket up in the air so that that lightning bolt decides to strike your rocket and come to your instruments instead of striking somewhere else around you. Alyssa launches rocket after rocket hoping for a bite. Triggering lightning really is a lot like winning the lottery. You can set up all the conditions right, and you can do everything to the exact time that you hope is right, and you can still be wrong. Finally, at 3.23 p.m., on the sixth launch, it happens. These are the actual images. Lightning strikes the rocket. Millions of volts of electricity pulse through the wire to a ground target which measures data. In the video, when the lightning flash is showing there, you can see a, a bright straight segment. And that bright straight segment is the wire from my rocket. So the rocket is basically at the top of that wire segment. And above that, you have the rest of the lightning bolt. Now imagine if this was a battlefield, and that target was an enemy tank. A rocket could be sent up over that tank with a dangling wire, which could direct a lightning strike right into it. Alyssa is doing lightning research for the New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology's Langmer Laboratory with no intended military application. But once we know how to trigger lightning, weaponizing may not be far off. Lightning would be a devastating weapon to be able to bring into the, the modern battlefield. Among the deadliest natural phenomenon known to man, a single lightning bolt can stretch over five miles and top 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the equivalent of five suns. On the one hand, I mean, it, it could certainly kill large numbers of troops, but far more importantly, it could short out the sensitive electronic systems that lie at the heart of much of modern weaponry. Lightning strikes could take out radar systems, could render guidance systems inoperative, uh, could interfere with all sorts of computer software. It's harder to imagine a, a cooler weather weapon than the ability to be able to throw lightning bolts at your enemies like Zeus. There are key barriers to overcome in order to weaponize lightning, torrential rains, even hurricanes. That's Impossible has assembled a to-do list. One, an aggressor must be able to trigger the weather where and when it's needed. Two, there would need to be a way to target the weapon, like aiming a lightning bolt at an enemy installation. And three, the technology would have to be plausibly deniable. 
which means it wouldn't show a fingerprint of who launched the strike. At the Nevada Lightning Lab, Greg Lay is also trying to find out what triggers lightning. And he's making his own lightning to find out. His office equipment, two towering Tesla coils that generate 19 million volts of electricity and temperatures of 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Lay built the lab to study the effects lightning has on airplanes, homes, and vehicles in the hopes of finding ways to make them safer in lightning storms. Lightning is an electrical discharge from the cloud to the earth. Whenever the cloud uh, builds up to a particular voltage, anywhere from 100 to 300 million volts, some mechanism initiates a discharge that travels from the cloud to the earth. It's a tremendous amount of instantaneous power. A single lightning strike during the strike would probably power the western United States, but only for a very short uh, split second of time. The Nevada Lightning Lab is an effort to reproduce and study electrical anomalies that happen on a large scale. Our goal is to recreate about 300 feet of an actual lightning strike. Lay will now demonstrate the power of his machine. Each time he turns it on, he hopes to get a step closer to understanding lightning's untamed fury. It's totally safe as long as you stand in the right places. If you do the wrong thing, it could be very bad. On go the coils, and the pressure of 19 million volts slowly builds in the air, just like lightning in a cloud. Imagine a spark plug which supplies an electrical charge to start a car's engine. The charged particles in the air slam together, igniting a spark, and a lightning bolt erupts. A small-scale model of what happens naturally outdoors. This experiment produces a 20-foot lightning bolt. Lay is building a lab where he'll someday be able to trigger lightning 10 times that size. For centuries, people have dreamed about being able to control lightning. Hopefully, this will be the first practical attempt towards understanding how one might control lightning. Although Greg Lay and Alyssa Eastvet have no knowledge or interest in using lightning as a weapon of war, once scientists crack the code of what triggers lightning, the military will certainly use it. Triggering lightning, aiming the bolt, and doing it secretly. Some of the theory dates back 100 years to legendary electrical inventor Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla can probably be regarded as the founding father of directed energy weapons and as such may have laid the foundations um, for all sorts of uh, weather modification and weather warfare um, strategies. Nikolai Tesla was an eccentric genius and was widely seen as, as the great rival to Thomas Edison. Around 1891, Tesla invented the type of towering transformer coils still in use today to generate high voltage currents for studying electricity. It was Tesla who developed alternating current, the electrical current that we use to power our homes and appliances. It was also Tesla who put man on his quest to control the weather. He developed a chilling theory for controlling the weather using extremely low frequency waves, or ELF waves. If you've been to a rock concert and felt the low frequency vibrations of the music pounding from the speakers, ELF waves are similar to that. ELF waves are low-level electrical currents that are discarded from electrical power lines, electrical wirings in our homes, even electrical equipment in our cars. These are normally emitted at levels so low that they won't harm you. Tesla theorized that if ELF waves could be beamed into the ionosphere, in the upper reaches of the atmosphere, man could change the course of weather. The ELF waves would create heat altering the molecular structure of the ionosphere, pushing it out into space. When you heat a certain region of the ionosphere, it literally pushes it up and creates what would look like a column of space. And the lower atmosphere then rushes in to fill that space. And as it does, it changes the flow of jet streams within the region, pressure systems. And in that respect, it could manipulate weather. What this means is the heated ionosphere acts like a giant dam, rerouting the path of the jet stream. The jet stream flows between six and nine miles above the Earth's surface and reaches speeds up to 300 miles per hour. The jet stream is a, is a focused, high-velocity rope of air that moves billions of gallons of water around our world, like a giant river 
at uh, 50, 60,000 feet up. It moves all the water around our world for rain, for storms. This is the lifeblood of planet Earth. Could Tesla's theories help create a new generation of covert weather weapons?